Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Here's your weekly update. In honor of Black History Month, the Philadelphia History Museum invites you to come take a look at the history of African Americans in Philadelphia. There is an online exhibition with 200 objects from the museum's collection. Looking for something to spice up your night? This Thursday in Wayne, Painting with a Twist is holding a wine party from 7 to 9. You can bring your own wine and snacks. A featured artist will walk you step by step through a painting that you can take home with you. Reservations are highly encouraged. The Center for Student Engagement and Leadership, better known as the SEAL Office, works to bring new activities and events to Cabrini College. Our own Heather La Pergola sat down with members of SEAL to find out more about what they do and what they're working on. Here in the SEAL office, I participate in two um, groups here, which is the Student Government Association and the Campus Activity and Programming Board. And we are also known as CAT Board. And what we do is we plan um, the big events that here at Cabrini College, such as the trips to New York in the fall and then the themed weeks that we have, which are coming up in the spring. Well, I'm the director, so as the director, I um, oversee the orientation program. So that's one of the primary responsibilities that I have, and also family weekends. Um, I also work with Student Government Association. I directly advise them, so I work closely with them. I um, sit on a lot of committees on campus, so I work um, on the administrative leadership team, which is all the directors across campus. We meet with cabinet and with the president um, on different initiatives that, were, you know, that are happening on campus. The Student Government Association is run through the SEAL office here at Cabrini College. Um, we are the voice of the student body and we serve as a liaison between students and faculty and staff. Um, so really what we do is we try to bring concerns that students have to light uh, to the college administration and make sure that they know what we consider to be an important issue and that we work to get that changed. We directly advise the two largest student organizations on campus, one of them being CAP Board. I directly advise them. The other one is Student Government Association. Um, part of my job, I directly work as a liaison with commuter students. So I currently am working with the commuter learning community um, but I also on occasion will reach out to commuters just to see what they need at the time, if I can provide anything for them, occasionally plan events or just get information to that population. For Location Weekly News, I'm Heather Lapragola on Location for Location. Now back to the studio. That was your trip around the block. So Kevin, how about that Super Bowl? What an exciting game it was, a great way to end the NFL season. A lot of action happened on the field, so let's take a look. There was a little bit of everything at Super Bowl 47. In the first battle of brothers on the sidelines, the action on the field between the Baltimore Ravens and San Francisco 49ers was intense, but the Ravens ultimately held on for a 34-31 win in the big game. The Ravens led by a score of 28-6 in the third quarter when a partial power outage in the New Orleans Superdome caused a lengthy delay. Ravens quarterback Joe Flacco threw for 287 yards and three touchdowns to win Super Bowl MVP. With just one week left until the playoffs begin, Cabrini basketball continued their winning ways. The men's team picked up a 99-76 victory over Cairn University on Monday, marking their sixth straight victory. Senior Jeremy Knowles led the team with 17 points and eight rebounds. The women's team continued their winning streak, grabbing their 14th straight win on Saturday when they defeated Centenary College 60-46. The Lady Cavs' stifling defense held the opposition to just 11 points in the second half and helped them improve to a perfect 13-0 on the season in CSAC play. The two teams wrap up their regular seasons next Wednesday. The Flyers and Sixers are starting to show signs of righting the ship on their respective seasons. The Flyers defeated the Tampa Bay Lightning 2-1 on Tuesday for their second straight win and fourth win of the season. Tom Sestito scored both goals and goaltender Ilya Brizgalov stopped 21 of 22 shots. The Sixers defeated the Orlando Magic on Monday by a score of 78 to 61 for their third straight victory. Center Spencer Hawes led the team with 21 points and 14 rebounds in the win. So far on their current eight game homestand, the Sixers are four and one. Tune in next week for an update on Philly sports, as well as a look at the upcoming playoff picture for Cabrini basketball. Now back to Molly with your trip around the nation.
Former New York City Mayor Ed Koch died of heart failure, according to CNN, this past Friday at the age of 88. Koch was elected mayor of New York City in 1977 and served for three terms. Current Mayor Michael Bloomberg said in a statement that New York City has lost an irreplaceable icon. Koch was very fond of President Barack Obama and was a strong influence during his first term election. An Alabama boy returns home after being freed from a week's captivity in an underground bunker. The five-year-old boy named Ethan was snatched from a school bus in a fatal shooting. Only recently was he rescued after FBI agents raiding the kidnapper's home, Jimmy Lee Dykes, leaving him dead. Dykes also killed the school bus driver, Charles Poland, who was blocking the aisle while other children escaped from the back of the bus, according to authorities. Dykes' cause of death is still unknown at this time. After being held in an underground bunker for six days, Ethan is safe and ready to celebrate his sixth birthday this week. Americans do some amazing eating during annual Super Bowl Sunday celebrations. According to the National Chicken Council, Americans consume one and a quarter billion chicken wings during Super Bowl weekend. In addition, one in seven Americans order takeout or have food delivered on game day. 60% of those orders are pizza, are pizza which many con consider a must-have Super Bowl treat. Americans wash that down with 50 million cases of beer, generating a beer tab of almost $11 billion. Let's hope they hit the gym Monday morning and worked off all those carbs. Want to see what's going on in Wayne? Let's join Bethany as she explores what activities there are in town. I'm Bethany Biggenhill, on location for location. Join us today as we travel to all the hot spots of Wayne. Come on and join us! Here we are at the Wayne Theater, where you can catch the latest flick and get discounted tickets through the SEAL office. Here we are at Color Me Mine, located on Lancaster Avenue. Here you can pick out different pots and different potteries and decorate them and bring your friends. And also, there's a college night on Mondays, which is only $5 for admission. Here we are at the new J.D. McGillicullys, located in Wayne. And as you can see, for college students, there's specials on Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night, there's a dance party. Here we are on North Wayne Avenue at the Great American Pub. If you're looking for a night of food and fun, come on down to the Great American Pub. Here we are at the Wayne train station. If you're sick of Cabrini and want to get out of Wayne, the SEAL office offers discounted tickets for SEPTA. Here we are at Painting with a Twist. You can sign up online and have a great party with your friends. Here we are at the brand new Dunkin' Donuts located on Lancaster Avenue. Take advantage of the free Wi-Fi and grab a great cup of coffee. Remember, Cabrini College runs on Dunkin'. Here we are at Manila's, which is a 24-hour diner. If you're looking for inexpensive food that's pretty good, come on down. Looking to spice up your life? and are sick of the cafeteria food, come on down to Chili's. Here we are at Wayne Square, and right behind me is So Fun Yogurt, where you can now use your calves cash. Also, we have a variety of different stores and dining options. I hope you enjoyed our trip around Wayne. I'm Bethany Bigginhill. Now back to the news desk. That was your trip across the nation. What's going on with entertainment this week, Christine? Well, there was a lot of speculation with Beyonce and her lip syncing, but that definitely wasn't the case with the Super Bowl's uh, halftime show. So let's go take a look. Don't blame Beyonce for blowing the lights out at the 2013 Super Bowl. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell said Monday that the halftime show was not the cause of the power outage that darkened the Superdome for a half hour during Sunday's broadcast. Beyonce was, at the ha was the halftime performer at Sunday night's game and used plenty of power to light up the stage. Some had joked that her electrifying performance was the blame for the outage. But the halftime show was running on its own generator, according to Goodell. Clearly, asking Beyonce to do the halftime show at the Super Bowl was a smart plan because she killed it. But what seemed to be an even better idea was reuniting the sinner, singer with fellow Destiny's Child members Kelly Rowland and Michelle Williams. Apparently, after the performance, fans were so impressed that they rushed to buy some of the group's music. Talk about a moneymaker. Now back to Nicole with your trip around the world. Malala Yousafzai, the 15-year-old schoolgirl from Pakistan who was shot by the Taliban in October, 
because of her public activism for women's rights to education, underwent major skull reconstruction surgery this weekend. According to ABC News, doctors say that the surgery was a success and that Malala is doing well. During the operations, surgeons covered part of her shattered skull with a titanium plate and implanted a hearing device for her damaged inner ear. Malala was critically injured last October in Pakistan when a gunman shot her in the head several times. She was transported to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham, England shortly after she was shot. Against all odds, she returned to everyday life with no signs of major brain damage. The recent five-hour surgery was her final major medical procedure. She announced the creation of a new charitable fund to support the cause she has championed, the Malala Fund for Girls' Education. A confidential Justice Department memo concludes that the U.S. government can order the killing of American citizens if they are believed to be senior operational leaders of Al-Qaeda or an associated force, even if there is no intelligence indicating that they are engaged in an active plot to attack the U.S. According to NBC News, the 16-page memo offers details about the legal reasoning behind one of the Obama administration's most controversial policies. It's dramatically increased use of drone strikes against Al-Qaeda suspects abroad. The attacks include those aimed at American citizens, such as the September 2011 strike in Yemen that killed two alleged Al-Qaeda operatives. Both were U.S. citizens who had never been indicted by the U.S. government nor charged with any crimes. The secrecy surrounding such strikes is fast emerging as a central issue in the White House. That was your trip around the world. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Please be sure to follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Please stay tuned for our public service announcement. Have a great week, Cabrini.